The new world order does not mean surrendering our national sovereignty or forfeiting our interests. Music's over. Okay. Now, now, keep in mind that some of my guests have been approached by old Homeland Security or FBI and saying, oh, uh, why are you going on the Clay Douglas show? My message to those guys that they're listening this morning is, go get a cup of coffee, maybe you'll learn something. We both took the same model. You know, to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I don't recall ever being an expiration date on that. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Free American. I'm your host. I am Clay Douglas. And I'm very proud to have Larry Pratt from Gun Owners of America as my guest today. Hello, Larry. Good morning. Good to be with you. Good to have you back on. Uh, we've been doing this for a lot of years, haven't we, sir? It goes back a few. <laughs> and, you know... Sometimes, Larry, I think we're making progress. When I go to Gun Owners of America, and, uh, you know, I see that uh, we've managed to remove a boner from our, uh, from our Congress. I think he's resigned. And then again, I, I go a little bit further, and I see that uh, Harry Reid, the... Uh, one of the bad guys that we've got in Nevada, and uh, one of the uh, ones that uh, got pitted against the militias that I helped start for you uh, last year. Uh, he's attacking you. He's attacking gun owners of America and uh, the gun lobby for killing gun control. <laughs> I think that's a, a good thing, personally, and uh, I'd like to see uh, Harry. Yeah, we'll Go ahead. Your comments on that, sir. Yeah, we'll take it. We're uh, always happy to be attacked for, uh, in effect, being uh, effective by the other side. Uh, we uh, we appreciate their uh, uh, their paying attention to that. Well, let's talk about what happened here. This is uh, what we had in Oregon was uh, a a. Muslim, uh, one of the, uh, evidently, uh, uh, we're not supposed to criticize anybody for being a Muslim. They could certainly c criticize us for being Christian or, or Jewish, but uh, we can't, uh, we're not supposed to criticize Muslim. And we had one, a man that killed 10 people 
and Oregon in a community uh, college there. And, and Harry Reid is defending this guy somehow, obliquely. Well, I don't know how anybody could even imagine doing something like that because whatever somebody's motive, when they've killed as many people as that dirtbag in Oregon, uh, there's um, there's a you, you just can't say why bother trying to excuse what he's done. It might help to understand <clears throat> if indeed he uh, was uh, getting into Islam that well you know Islam's a dangerous religion and the Quran teaches uh, murder of unbelievers. Uh, so that would be a good discussion to have. Yeah, this. Uh... This shooter, he uh, asked people before he shot them if they were uh, if they were Christian, didn't he? Is that uh, that's a story that I got? That's the information I got that, here. Uh, the, uh, some of the sur at least one of the survivors had uh, she was playing dead. Uh, she either had been shot or was uh, anyway on the ground where people had been killed, and she said that is. What the guy asked, even every, uh, each and every time he came up to his next victim and asked them if they were Christian before he shot them. Uh, and I think Ben Carson had a very good opinion that uh, he's not going to bother answering. He's going to be busy attacking and hoping that the others follow along. Ben Carson, one of the... Uh one of the good guys out there that's uh, running for president. I yep. want I want to get your opinion on that too. I I, uh, I have a little bit of mixed feelings about this presidential race. I you know I've been in the presidential races uh, back in 1996 with Charles Collins, who wanted to take down the Fed, take back our money supply. I thought that was a good thing, and the press never gave him any press. They uh, Every time he got up to speak at a Republican convention, they uh, just turned the cameras off. So, uh, again, one of the reasons that I do the Free American Radio Show and why I did the Free American Magazine out there. So, You bet. You the, can't rely on the mainstream media part of the plan. Well, it's like uh, my friend Carl Klang, who does uh, the music, did the music for my uh, show here. <laughs> if if you print your very own money, hey, pretty soon you can buy up the whole neighborhood. You know, and that's kind of what's happened to us, isn't it? Sure enough. Sure enough. Well, I think um, uh, Carson uh, made a, a great point, and uh, I, I think that... Uh, kind of set the tone for uh, other people's responses. And, and of course, hopefully what we're going to have is a discussion on getting rid of gun-free zones because that's really where it needs to be. This, uh, all of these shootings have taken places. All of these uh, mass murders have taken in place in gun-free zones, haven't they? From what we've been able to all but two since 1950 have taken place in gun-free zones. And there were a couple of mass murders that were averted in gun-free zones because somebody was violating the law and had a gun, a good guy with a gun was there when the bad guy wanted to get started on a mass murder. One was in the Clackamas Mall in Oregon outside of Portland and that was maybe, I don't know, three or four years ago. A um, guy saw and heard a dirtbag start to kill people, and he ran up with his gun out. He'd had it concealed. Had a concealed carry permit. It's just that it wasn't legal in that mall, which had stupidly posted no guns. So, of course, there goes the mass murderer, the wannabe, to the no-gun zone. And the good guy saw that heard that, ran toward the dirt bag with his gun out. Dirt bag saw that and committed suicide. Terrific ending. And it would not have ended that way had it not been for that uh, armed citizen. 
if they had had to wait for the cops, it would have been really, really bad. Uh, it would have been five to seven minutes. It would have been quite a death toll uh, in, under those circumstances. And very similar set of circumstances in a naval hospital in Darby, Pennsylvania, gun-free zone, as all government facilities are, stuck on stupid. They've uh, had mass murders occur in their gun-free zones, and they haven't learned a bit. But happily, this one doctor uh, was violating the law, and when a dirtbag killed his colleague and wounded him, he was able by then to get his own gun, shoot back, and stop the killer. Well, you've got to break the law in order to be able to protect yourself. That's wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just kind of reminded me when the ADL listed me in their little fundraising brochure called Armed and Dangerous, and I'm pretty sure you were in it too. <laughs> I, I called him up in New York, and I said, I just wanted you assholes to know you got something right, finally. I am armed, well, and if you if you attack yeah. my family or my country, I'm definitely dangerous. I, I thought it was uh, always an honor to be attacked by the Southern Poverty Law Center or the ADL, because these people are militantly anti-self-defense. And it's interesting that if you talk to them, you'll find out that almost invariably, their views about being defenseless as an individual also extend to their views of national policy. And we ought not be able to defend ourselves uh, abroad as well in foreign affairs. And uh, isn't it interesting that our gun control president is doing absolutely nothing to defend the United States, just taking apart our military. So uh, uh, I think we can see it in practice. It's not something that I'm inventing. Uh, I'm just observing. <laughs> you know, Larry, I, I have said somewhat facetiously that uh, Obama is really our uh, the perfect New World Order leader. You know, he's supposed to be he's Muslim. He's uh, he uh, is. Uh, born Jewish, uh, he uh, and brags about being a Jewish, and uh, he also pretends to be a Christian, but he's black, he's white, he's, uh, he's the perfect one world government front, isn't he? And I think the most significant thing about him is he's a perfect wuss. Um, he is decidedly anti-self-defense, uh, he's not going to to defend American uh, national sovereignty at all. Uh, he, he went on that apology tour as soon as he was elected, and he might as well have stayed on the tour because he's done nothing to uh, defend the country. On the contrary, he continues to hollow out the military. And we are in a very dangerous situation thanks to our dear leader who took an oath, which he obviously... Uh, didn't take seriously to defend and protect the Constitution. You know, it puts us in a strange position, and I, I, I know this may be a little out of your area of expertise. I mean, you are gun owners of America, but uh, I, I've told people, and correct me if you uh, if I'm wrong on any of this, after World War II, General Patton said we fought on the wrong side, that we uh, should have uh, gone against the communists, we should have gone against Stalin, who murdered 60 million white Christian Russians. I mean, the Russians were never our enemy, but their government was. You know, right. um, Americans aren't our enemy uh, here, but... Uh, We've certainly been yeah, made into the enemy. Uh, he was interesting because he had fought the Nazis and had done so enthusiastically, but he wanted to keep on going. When he was on the attack and he was rolling toward Berlin, uh, he was seeking permission, which was denied, uh, to keep on going to Moscow. And uh, 
uh, having seen uh, historically how Patton operated, it's highly likely that he would have been able to tumble the communist regime. This puts us in uh, uh, bringing us up to modern day. I think uh, it, it's got us in a pretty strange position, and I really wanted to get your input on that. The uh, we just narrowly avoided a war in Syria. Obama wanted to go in Syria. They tried to frame the Syrians. Oh, they are fighting with poison gas. I don't know that Assad is a good guy, but uh, almost a million Syrians have been uh, killed, murdered, or dispossessed of their homes. I don't think they're the bad guys. And now we're put in a position where something is being done about these so-called terrorists, ISIS. And before ISIS, there was Al Qaeda. I'm sorry, Al Qaeda. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's uh, it's almost like uh, positions have been reversed. That Putin is the good guy, and uh, and uh, the, he is using the Russian military to go after the real terrorists that our CIA has been supporting. You know, it, from what I've been able to read, the um, Assad government of Syria, which is a bad a group of bad actors, has been defending the Christians of Assyria and other minorities because Assad himself is a minority. He's not uh, uh, of the minor of the majority Sunni or even the Shia uh, Muslim sects but a very small one, an ethnically related one, the Alawites, and this guy has actually been protecting the Christians. So that, in my mind, explains why Obama would be going after him. And what an irony that uh, a colonel in the KGB, Mr. Putin, uh, is the one who actually seems to be defending the Christians in Syria. It's incredible. Yes. Yes, it is. Strange times that we are in. And uh, let's, let's uh, move back uh, to America here. You're on the you're on the hill. Now, I've had I've had a few guests on here that talked about the legitimacy of the. Uh, of our own government here, of our of our senators here, our congressmen here, and uh, if you go back, uh, you know, hundred years or so, the real Thirteenth Amendment barred anyone with uh, dual citizenship or titles of nobility from uh, holding office, from a, uh, for holding office in the uh, Congress. And these lawyers that we got, and you're rubbing elbows with them every day, these lawyers that are, are basically taking out our separation of powers. We've got lawyers uh, running for Congress. We've got lawyers running for uh, the, uh, all these offices, and uh, our whole legal system is uh, dominated by these people with titles of nobility. They're, they're, they're working, I guess, and they're actually working for the British Accredited Registry. So who, who actually won the uh, revolution here, <laughs> the Revolutionary <laughs> War? Did we win, or did England do it? And they've got their, their dupes in there who are, uh, basically fomented every, every uh, problem we've got today, including that of Israel. I mean... Uh, it was the Balfour Declaration that uh, made the Palestinians uh, criminals in their own country here. What's, uh, 
What's your What's your view on these lawyers here? And uh, hopefully, I, I don't. Uh, I, I never asked you whether you were an attorney or not. So. No, I'm not an attorney, and and, and frankly, uh, there are attorneys that will uh, say that you're essentially correct that that uh, the, the system has been used to oppress people, uh, set up a system of laws that uh, are not they're not designed to provide law and order so much as they are to provide for the uh, enrichment of those in control of the system. And I think that's what has people so completely disgusted this election year because it used to be that there was a presumption that the Republican Party uh, was trying to defend freedom, uh, certainly is in their platform, uh, have limited government, get government off our back, uh, defend the country abroad. Uh, all of these things were pretty much uniformly subscribed to in Republican platforms. Well, a lot of Americans now have come to the point where they just simply don't believe that. They look at the Republicans as indistinguishable from the Democrats, that both party elites, not necessarily the rank and file, but certainly the party elites, the ones in power, uh, are... Uh, peas in a pod. There's really no difference other than a name. And that, I think, accounts for why Donald Trump has been able to touch such a nerve with his attack on the establishment uh, here in Washington, although the establishment is a term I would apply to every government center in the country. People get into office and they start looking at the world a little differently, uh, unhappily. But certainly Trump has his finger on it, and I think Cruz's, uh, Senator Cruz, who we've endorsed, has said the same thing when he called out Senator McConnell, the majority leader of the Senate, as a liar by name. Um, the only thing I could think of, of uh, possible criticism was, well, the, uh, Senator, you're right on. Just why did it take so long to say it? <laughs> yeah, you know, but, uh, I, I, I've got people that uh, don't like Donald Trump because uh, they feel he, uh, because his daughter uh, married uh, uh, a Jewish businessman, and um, of course some people are, are always uh, uh, paranoid of uh, people with money. But he is saying the right things, and uh, maybe it's uh, maybe because he has made as much money as he has that they can't control him with money. And no, I, I doubt they can control him, and he's a good marketer, and he sees where that political market is, and he has correctly identified um, the fed up to the top situation of most American voters, and that's what he's appealing to, and I think that's why his numbers have so far remained rather strong. It might be a good thing that uh, if, if Trump took on Carson as a uh, vice presidential pick, with his daughter being married to a Jew, it kind of offsets the whole anti-Semitic thing that the ADL and Southern Poverty Law do. Yeah, I, I don't think that's part of Trump's makeup at all. Uh, he's, uh, as far as I can tell, he's been a man that isn't so much a conservative or a liberal. Uh, he's been willing to do business uh, as a real estate developer in urban areas, he didn't have much choice but to uh, make nice with whoever was in power because otherwise he wasn't going to be able to get permits. And um, and I think to a certain extent that's that might explain why he's been cozy with Democrats and Republicans. Uh, maybe he got too comfortable dealing uh, with government and uh, 
that I think is one thing that I have in the back of my mind. But uh, in the meantime, uh, he's got a, a campaign that's out in front because of what he's saying. And he knows that people don't like this establishment that he's been kicking around. Yeah, he used to be making a lot of money from it in the past. But uh, uh, right now, uh, as a citizen politician Trump, uh, he's he's attacking that uh, that establishment, and who knows? It may be habit forming. Maybe that's the way he's going to be. Where else uh, do we go? What uh, let's uh, let's uh, I'm just going to kind of cut you loose. What uh, what do we need to do? Uh, one of the things that I keep trying to hammer is what can we do as Americans? If our political system, if our our so-called leader, the, the congressman that we've elected, if they're not working for us, if they're working for uh, the uh, New World Order, what good does it do to us uh, to support us? Why are Americans, we sent last year, we sent over a million dollars to Republicans or Democrats, and I'm one of those that you just mentioned. I've been telling people that there ain't a dime's worth of difference between the Republicans and Democrats. They're two wings of the same bird, and that bird's a global vulture. It ain't an eagle. And if we can't support, uh, if every congressman we got out there is working for England or working for Israel or working for the Muslims, or trying to, and, and they are bringing a tons of Muslims in here, and the same thing is happening in Europe. It's not just us. Here we've got the illegal aliens coming in. And, you know, thank God we got Trump out there actually uh, speaking out against them. Right. Against the, the whole illegals. We got, uh, I mean, they're responsible thousands of murders, thousands of rapes, thousands of thefts in America. And... We can't even send them back to the country they came from. There's something wrong with our Congress and our, our Senate if they're not dealing with that problem. And Trump's the only presidential candidate out there I know of that's uh, thinking about it. But I think uh, you're also uh, you're also uh, kind of partial to a, uh, a Texan out there, aren't you? <laughs> you bet you. We've even endorsed Senator Cruz. He's got uh, almost identical positions to Donald Trump, but uh, to give Trump his due, he is a very successful uh, marketer. He has articulated concerns that the American people have in such a way that uh, it's, I guess, what really ticks the media off is that Trump clearly doesn't give a rip what they think. And Senator Cruz is more measured in the way he speaks, and that's pretty a pretty obvious difference. Well, at the moment, people are just trying to send a message at a minimum. And there's Trump saying, I'm the message, send me, and uh, he doesn't care if they like his bombast or not. He's coming in with uh, both feet <laughs> and having a ball, and the more the media screams, the more he seems to get it that, hey, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, Texas has got uh, quite a few things going for it. I mean, I, I was born and raised in Texas, and I've been to 49 states. I've traveled to 49 states. I always wanted to see what was just over the hill. And uh, it's... Uh, Texas is taking back its gold. Texas is talking about opening their own bank here, their own, uh, and, and taking their own gold back, and that's got to make the banksters a little bit nervous, doesn't it? We are... Yeah, isn't that the Chapel Hill Bank that's uh, been doing that? It's the, uh, it's the, uh, I'm not sure which bank it is, it's the, uh, University, uh, I believe, uh, University of uh, one of our universities here, University of Texas, probably. But uh, 
they're talking about bringing billions of dollars worth of gold back. They just haven't got a bank set up or a vault set up secure enough to hold it. And, uh, you know, the whole, we've got Fort Knox, but nobody knows what's in Fort Knox if we got any money left in there at all. Right. Well, listen, it's the bottom of the hour, and I've got another show coming in on me, so I'm going to have to bail out on you. But great to be with you again. It's been a long time. Glad yeah. we're able to do it. Yes, sir. You're welcome back any time. I appreciate the work that uh, you do. And up on my website, under the show, under your name here on the uh, show, which has the URL, let Super. people know about it, and uh, and uh, we've got Gun Owners of America. People can go there and make a donation. You're doing great work, Larry Pratt. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Clay. I appreciate what you're doing with your microphone. And, uh, glad you're uh, quite a run now, actually. That's that's terrific. Yes, sir. Got uh, pushing uh, over 20 years here now. God Amazing. bless you. That's great. Thank you, sir. Okay, see ya. All right. All right. All right. Got it back in uh, Cyanide 77 has uh, made a donation. Want to thank Marco. Here we got a European supporting the Free American. How about the rest of you out there? And don't know who 78 is. Don't even care. You don't say anything bad if he's just listening. That's okay. And Teddy, if he, uh, my Rabbi Ted, if he was listening, he would probably come in and say we're talking about the chat room here. We... Uh, Teddy's uh, may really be a rabbi. Got a website anyway, says he does. Don't know. Don't know. Don't care. Now, let's see. Uh, what else have we got here? Let's see what else we've got here to talk about. Almost overslept today. Don't know why. But uh, let's take a look at uh, the uh, website here. Had David uh, Mercatz on here, another victim of a wrongly charged in a crime. He was on yesterday. That shows up on, uh, along with his website, wronglycharged.com. Another true story about these lawyers. I mean, we talked about the lawyers here. They are still doing that. And uh, back on the 6th, we had James Perloff, author of the uh, Truth is a Lonely Warrior. And... Uh, I don't know that uh, that really uh, that really hit me. I mean, the whole title of the book. He sent me a book. I got a signed copy here. It is a wonderful history. It is a wonderful history, and uh, it talks about. Uh, Back here on page 132, he talks about the origins of masonry. The word assassin comes from uh, Hashashim, an Islamic cult, began in the 11, 11th century by Hassan I. Sab, Sabah. Known as the Old Man of the Mountain, he commanded his ruthless forces from an impregnable mountain fortress. He was a satanic figure who possessed such loyalty among his followers that they would instantly slit their own throats or jump off a cliff if ordered. How did he induce this loyalty? He would select young men whom he thought would make good assassins. 
He told them he was on an equal footing with the Prophet Muhammad and would send any could send anyone to paradise whom he chose. These youths were then drugged with opium. When they awoke, they would be in a valley where Hassan owned several palaces. Surrounded by beautiful women and every imaginable pleasure, they were told that this was paradise. After four or five days, they were drugged again and removed from the valley. Upon waking, they were told that they could return to this paradise forever if they would obey Hassan's every command which most did. There were certain similarities between the assassins and masons. The assassins had a hierarchy of degrees, secret signals, and oaths of absolute obedience. Also, on reaching the top of the assassin hierarchy, the members were told the Koran was a lie, just as some high-ranking masons are told the Bible is a lie. The assassins were Islam's masonry, loosely the forerunners of today's Shiite suicide bombers. Masonry is historically connected to the assassins. During the early Crusades, the Knights Templar were assigned to guard pilgrims going to the Holy Land. Wonder where they were last week, last month. The uh, during the early crusade, the Knights Templar were assigned to guard pilgrims going to the Holy Land. However, they became increasingly corrupt and given to plundering. At one point, they were supposed to battle the assassins, but the old man of the mountain offered them huge amounts of gold. Instead of fighting the assassins, the Knights made a truce with them, fellowshiped with them, and adopted many of their rituals. When they returned to Europe, they brought back these rituals, which became the occult beginnings of Freemasonry. Enter the Illuminati. By the late 18th century, the Illuminati controlled masonry on the European continent, as Roberson, Barul, and others were then documented. The Illuminati were in turn directed by Weishaupt, who answered to the Rothschilds. Because Freemasonry enjoys legalized secrecy, its lodges have historically preserved, served as a venue for subversive activities. We previously commented that the French Revolution was not a spontaneous uprising. It was carefully organized through France's 2,000 Masonic lodges each having a revolutionary committee. When the National Assembly took over the government in 1789, many of its members were Masons. Bonnet, orator of the Covenant of the Grand Orient Lodge of France, declared in 1904, during the 18th century, the glorious line of the Encyclopedistes found in our temple a fervent audience, which alone at that period invoked the radiant motto still unknown to the people of liberty, equality, and fraternity. The revolutionary seed germinated rapidly in that select company. Our illustrious uh, brother Masons, de Alembert, Diderot, Helvitus, de Holbach, Voltaire, and a con Corset completed the evolution of the people's minds and prepared the way for a new age. And when the Bastille fell, Freemasonry had the supreme honor to present the humanity the charter which it had friendly uh, elaborated. On August 25th, 1789, the Constituent Assembly, of which more than 300 members were Masons, finally adopted almost word for word such as it uh, had been for long it elaborated in the lodges the text of the immortal declaration of the rights of men. At that decisive hour for civilization, French masonry was universally universal conscious. Freemasons were also behind the 1910 revolution which overthrew King Manuel of Portugal 
and brutally suppressed the Catholic Church there. The revolutionary government was uh, even printed a new bank boat, banknotes bearing the Masonic symbols of the square and the compass. Fruitmont, the Grand Orient Orator of the Grand Orient of Belgium, said in 1911, Do you recall the deep feeling of pride which we all felt at the brief announcement of the Portuguese Revolution? In a few hours the throne was brought down, the people triumphed, and the republic was proclaimed. For those who were not initiated, it was a flash of lightning in a clear sky, but we, my brothers, we understood. We knew the marvelous organization, our Portuguese brothers, their ceaseless zeal, their uninterrupted, uninterrupted work. We possessed the secret of that glorious event. The Young Turk Revolution, which was in, uh, induced which induced the fall of the Ottomans Empire, Ottoman Empire Sultan was likewise a Masonic event. In 1909, 45 Turkish lodges formed the Grand Orient Ottoman. The French Masonic Review of Acacia explained a secret Young Turk Committee was founded, and the whole movement was directed from Salonika, as the town which has the greatest percentage of Jewish population in Europe, 70,000 Jews out of a population of 110,000 was specially qualified for this purpose. Besides, there were many Freemason lodges in uh, Salonika in which the revolutionaries could work undisturbed. These lodges were under the protection of the European diplomacy. The Sultan was defenseless against them. He could not any more prevent his own downfall. Freemasons were the backbone of Europe's other revolutions, such as the Italian insurrections against Mazzini and Garibaldi. Leon Trotsky was a 33rd degree Mason. Lenin, his cohort in leading the revolution, the Russian Revolution, belonged to a Swiss lodge. History books present Archduke Ferdinand's 1914 assassination, immediate trigger of World War I, as an act of Serbian nationalism. However, the trial of the conspirators established that several were Freemasons and that a Masonic edict had condemned the Archduke to death. One of the assassins, 19-year-old Nedeljko Kabrunovic, Bluntly explained, in Freemasons, in Freemasonry, it is permitted to kill. One reason Freemasons have made such a dependable revolutionary, their oath bind them to, their oaths bind them to absolute, unquestioning obedience to orders. Well, hold it, Jim. <laughs> and uh, James Perloff has this uh, little character that uh, speaks out against him if he moves off of the mark. He says, uh, Hold it, Jim. Masons are certainly not engaged in violent revolutionary stuff here in America. In fact, I know a Freemason. He's a World War II vet, grandfather, big baseball fan, a regular good Joe. Why are you spreading all this venom about Masons? James Perloff says, I myself have known fine Freemasons and have even been a guest on radio shows hosted by them. My maternal grandfather was a Freemason. In her youth, my mother belonged to the Freemasonic Order of the Eastern Star. Many observers have noted a distinction between the Scottish Rite Masonry practiced in England and North America and the Grand Orient Masonry observed in the European continent. They see the former as relatively benign, while the latter has a long history of subversive activity. It is obvious that the overwhelming majority of Freemasons are certainly not involved in any sinister activity. I have a, a attorney friend of mine that I felt was a good guy, and he joined the uh, Masons. And uh, when I asked him about it, he said, well, what better way to find out what they are doing? Uh, 
Alright, just taking a look here in the Okay. I I don't know why you guys are hooked up on or uh, or or even care about Ted. He is not a part of the show. He's merely a, a fan. Maybe he is. Our my number one fan. So let's move on a little bit from that, shall we? I'm going to do this while I warm up my coffee. Stay with me and we'll go back to the Masonic exposition of the Masonic. Hello friends, this is the Phoenix. You know me well and you hear me every Friday on Play Show. Today's not Friday, but what I'm here to tell you is that if you need if you're a business owner and you need business money, I can get it for you. If you have credit scores as low as 550 and you're doing business each and every month and your business is active and you've been in business for more than two years, I can get you money within five business days. Contact me at rjp.com. P-A-P-A -P -A at Yahoo.com. R-J-P-P-A-P-A -P -A -P -A at Yahoo.com. And if you don't own a business and you're looking for work and you can't get out of the house or you can't find a job and you have basic cons cons computer skills, you know how to copy and paste, you know how to put an ad on Craigslist, I can show you how to make money from home working 15 minutes to 30 minutes a day, no more, no less. Again, rjppapa at yahoo.com. And don't miss my show this coming Friday. Have a great day, folks. All right. Ah. All right. All right. If you uh, want to talk to me, I will take calls today from anyone except. Scumling, who I will never allow his voice to be heard on my show again, ever. I mean, uh, he uh, he does try to call me on my cell phones and all that, and uh, I, I guess he doesn't understand. I can just hang up on the son of a bitch. All right, we got a few people in here. On Earth, that's our land. Uh, David's Dr. D. Church. Don't know who Cog is. Lori's uh, there. We've uh, met. And uh, stand with Israel. You haven't said anything uh, stupid yet, so I'll let you stay. The wig is with me. I'm not kicking him. Wild Colleen's with me up to and signing. 
All right. Let's have. Let's go back and look at the Young Turk Revolution. By the way, that was where they killed a few million Armenians. And this Young Turk Committee was founded, and the whole movement was directed from Salonika, the town which had the greatest percentage of Jewish population in Europe, 70,000 Jews out of a total population of 110,000, were specifically, especially qualified for this purpose. Now, James Perloff says, I have known many uh, fine Freemasons, even have uh, been a guest on radio shows with them. So it's obvious that an overwhelming majority of American Freemasons are certainly not involved in any sinister activity. I would say the lawyers have as much to do with them, and many lawyers are Freemasons for the same thing. He says, however, one reason the American Freemasonry is not now engaged in violent revolution, our revolution ended over 200 years ago, we have no monarchy to overthrow, and while most Masons who never pass beyond the third degree are un undoubtedly are good Joes, a few high-ranking ones have contributed to the piecemeal conversion of our republic into socialism. And some lower Masons may prove unwitting tools in this process. Their vows of obedience can make them helpful in carrying out subordinate tasks. The Supreme Court, in wrecking religious liberty over the past 60 years, has been dominated by Freemasons, such as Hugo Back, William O. Douglas, Earl Warren, Potter Stewart, and Thorogood Marshall. Why did these men undermine the U.S. Constitution? Was it perhaps because their secret oaths to their brotherhood <clears throat> far outweighed their public oaths to uphold the Constitution? <clears throat> Didn't their Masonic membership help put them in these lofty positions? One can properly understand their controversial decisions, decisions not as innocent misinterpretations of the Constitution, but is following orders privately received. Violating these orders might have resulted in their own destruction, whereas violating the Constitution only resulted in a few verbal criticism from conservatives and Christians, which were drawn out, drowned out by the cheer from the establishment media anyway. Federal Reserve architect Paul Warburg was a 33rd degree Mason, as were his uh, lieutenants Edward Mandel House and Nelson Aldrich. At least 14 presidents have been Freemasons, as well as innumerable senators and congressmen. Listings may be found online. I may even be out there. I'm working, working the great there, seal you know. of the United States did not appear on the dollar bill until 1935, when Franklin D. Roosevelt, a 33rd degree Mason, ordered our currency changed to included. The seal is loaded with Masonic imagery. On the left is a pyramid, a Masonic, not American symbol. Above the pyramid is the all-seeing eye, a universal Masonic emblem. It reflects Satan's promise to Adam and Eve to open their eyes so they would be like God. The inscription, Annuit Conceptus Novus Order Seclorum, means announcing the birth of a new order of the ages, which the pyramid represents Satan's world order. The pyramid is unfinished. When completed, connecting to Satan's eye, he will reign. The six-pointed star is used in Satan worship, which can be verified by checking satanic books and websites. Placed over the pyramid, it represents, it brackets Satan's eye on the top, while the other five points spell Mason. Then inspect the bill's right side. 
The cluster of stars above the eagle also forms a six-pointed star. The eagle has 32 feathers on the right wing, 33 on the left, signifying masons, masonry's two highest degree. America is great in many ways. The Bill of Rights appended to the Constitution is a significant barrier to the rule of the Antichrist. James Perloff says, I don't wish to pursue such controversy over the American Revolution's merits, but to affirm the Masonic role in it, visit the Museum of Our National Heritage, Lexington, Massachusetts, run by Freemasons, the Sons of Liberty, who held a famous Boston Tea Party in 1773, were mostly members of the same Masonic Lodge that met at the Green Dragon Tavern. Freemason Paul Revere, who stirred the citizenry against Britain, went on to become Grand Masters of the Grand Lodge of Massachusetts. Many other Masons helped lead the revolution, including Benjamin Franklin, John Hancock, Ethan Allen, and perhaps with far less zeal, for the Brotherhood than others, George Washington. In many respects, it is reasonable to call the Revolution Masonic. All right. Now, let's, uh, let's move to chapter 12 of The Truth is the Lonely Warrior. And uh, he uh, says that he'll treat the uh, subject of environmentalism very briefly. The report from Iron Mountain was published in 1967 as the leaked findings of a private three-year study commissioned by the U.S. government. The report made shocking Orwellian recommendations, some of which are now becoming a reality. The establishment press denounced the report as a hoax. Yeah, like the Protocols of the Elders of Zion is supposed to be a forgery. My ass. Leonard C. Lewin the late Leonard C. Lewis said he had written it as a satire on government think tanks. However, economist John Kenneth Galbraith, writing under a pseudonym in the Washington Post Book World, said he had been asked to join the study but declined due to other commitments. I would put my personal repute beyond the behind the uh, authenticity of the document he wrote. If the report, as Lewin claimed, was a satire, it was strangely devoid of human humor. Many wonder if the hoax charge was issued for damage control. The study chiefly discussed the implications of the world moving from the system of war, which nuclear weapons were making impractical, practical, to disarmament. The report cited many advantages to war, not the least of which was alliance by citizens to their government, allegiance by citizens. To their government. In general, the war system provides the basic motivation for primary social motivation. In doing so, it reflects on the societal level of the incentives of individual human behavior. The most important of these for social purposes is the individual psychological rationale for allegiance to society, read government, and its values. Allegiance requires a cause a cause requires an enemy. This much is obvious. The critical point is that the enemy that defines the cause must seem genuinely formidable. The report noted that if wars disappeared, a new enemy would be required to induce allegiance. Among the solutions proposed were threats to the environment. <laughs> yeah think Joe Biden. Right? Yeah. Nevertheless, an effective political substitute for war would require alternative enemies, some of which might seem equally far-fetched in the context of the current war system. 
It may be, for instance, that gross pollution of the environment can eventually replace the possibility of mass destruction by nuclear weapons as the principal apparent threat to the survival of the species. Poisoning of the air and of the primary sources of food and water supply is already well advanced and at first glance would seem a promising in this aspect. It constitutes a threat that can be dealt with only through societal organization and political power. But from present indications it would be a generation to a generation and a half before environmental pollution, however severe, will be sufficiently menacing on a global scale to offer a possible basis for a solution. It is true that the rate of pollution could be increased selectively for this purpose. In fact, the mere modifying of existing programs for the deterrence of pollution could speed up the process enough to make the threat credible and much sooner. Was this a green movement? Was this the green movement's beginnings? In the, report, in the report's wake, numerous envir environmental scares were raised. Global warning, acid rain, overpopulation, ozone depletion, toxic waste, deforestation, endangered species, etc. Establishment foundations began pouring billions of dollars into environmental groups. When I was a young man leaving through newspaper help wanted sections, I saw plenty of ads from environmental organizations. The jobs required no experience but offered excellent pay. I wondered how can grassroots groups offer to pay salaries like that. Little did I know that they were riding the establishment gravy train. What are the true purposes of environmentalism? According to Dr. John Coleman, one key motivation is the Committee of 300's fanatical concern for preserving natural resources, which they believe will be personally needed for their reign during world government. Concerning America, there's another factor. The Club of Rome is an important European think tank. Its famous 1972 report, The Limits to Growth, which sold over 30 million copies promoted, promoted, proposed massive environmental concerns. In 1980, one of the club's leaders, Athena Devinajan, called for the United States to deindustrialize. Supposedly, we were overdeveloped, consuming too many natural resources, polluting the, polluting the environment, etc. In reality, the cartel feared America was too strong for world government to contain. Essentially, essential to their strategy is that no nation must ever be too powerful. As we saw earlier, part of America's deindustrialization came through trade agreements, NAFTA and GATT, which I warned you about 20 years ago, which crippled our manufacturing. The other means to deindustrialization was environmentalism. Well financed echo groups are trying to shut down US industry. We see lumber companies hamstrung over spotted owls. Tastes like chicken, by the way. Factories are closed due to smokestack emissions, offshore oil drilling banned to protect sea creatures, etc. Follow the money. These developments are rooted in Devion's uh, strategy, not the humane concerns of grassroots activists. Yet perhaps the most important reason for environmentalism is furnishing governments with an excuse to regulate individuals. An excellent reference uh, on this is Steve Malloy's book Green Hell. The core environmental danger Greens currently discuss is global warming allegedly caused by man-made carbon dioxide. Many scientists have refuted global warming's existence. Over 30,000 scientists have signed a position, petition denying the claims of global warming, www.petitionproject.org. Furthermore, as the climate, climate gate scandal proved, statistics used to prove global warming have been grossly falsified. Carbon dioxide is a naturally occurring substance required by plants and man's contributions to carbon dioxide levels are negligible.
Nevertheless, Al Gore and other green spokespersons ignore reality and continue to push the fact of global warming. Greens argue that each human has a carbon footprint to the amount of carbon emissions their lifestyle creates by driving cars, using electricity, etc. If a person's carbon footprint is deemed too great, the radical Greens want governments to a uh, government to impose penalties. This, if the Greens prevail, would entail, entail energy rationing. Even a government remote control of home thermostats has been pr proposed. Of course, they've got that too, don't they? After... Yeah, I might even do a second half of Lee Kaplan's show here. After calling my friends names here, especially ones that have donated to me when you haven't done a damn thing, will get your ass kicked again. Understand? Yeah. Now, energy is required for all activity by opposing all effective uh, forms of energy development while offshore drilling to nuclear power. The Greens are creating an artificial energy shortage. Drastically increasing the cost of electricity, providing an excuse for government to micro-regulate every home in Orwellian fashion. And since global warming is seen as a global threat, it's also being used as an excuse for world government. As a Fr former French president Jacques Chirac said in a speech advocating the Kyoto Protocol for the first time, humanity is instituting a genuine instrument of global governments, one that should find a place within the World Environment Organization which France and the European Union would be uh, would like to see established. The UN's main tool for environmental dictatorship is Agenda 21. It mandates sweeping regulation of human activity in the name of sustainable development and is being implemented in the United States right down to the level of local government. I've not written more on this because if you uh, Google Agenda 21, so many authors and organizations have already provided excellent resources exposing it. The Rothschilds have long been the establishment's dominant financial power. They've supported three major goals, world government, League of the Nations, and the UN, revolution, funding of Lenin and Trotsky, and Zionism, the movement to establish the modern state of Israel. And uh, he's got figure 11 here in the book. It's a Perloff family picture from around 1900. He says, my paternal ancestors were Russian Jews. My great-grandfather's name was Abraham Pavlovsky. People who criticize Zionism, as I'm about to do, are, be, are frequently accused of being motivated by anti-Semitism. Since I am half Jewish myself, I hope it's clear that such feelings do not impel me. And lest this book be quoting out of concept, let me state I'm unequivocally opposed to racism in any form. It's what I have told you. Yeah, Rabbi Kaplan was a pretty good stand with Israel, but you're gone. Goodbye. Now, I also find this interesting. Again, I've told you, I don't care who your grandmother slept with. I care about what is happening today.
And, uh, okay, I will see if I can bring this up. Hold on a minute. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. It was a Margie stuff. Okay. Right. You know that little clip you had? Hmm? You know that little clip like on the camera you had? Do you still have it? Possibly, but... Okay, don't worry about it. I thought you might just have it right there. That's okay. Yeah, I uh, do have that. Let's hear it. Here. Love Talk Radio. Uh, what we were saying was 
private owners of the Federal Reserve bailing their own banks. That you more than uh, uh, Bank of America. These are all stock of Federal Reserve, which is a private. Uh, it's a private bank, isn't it? Well, you you had a certain amount of conflict of interest. You know that that's where most of the money they went. You look at city, for example, and they got a twenty-five year bailout from the government. And uh, Citibank uh, is, I think, 18, 19 percent of Citibank is owned by the Saudis. So you know, mm-hmm. you have a situation where uh, we're 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 providing money to the same people living as money. We're providing uh, to uh, dictatorships overseas. You know, and, and let me extrapolate that into something on your website here, because uh, you're busy looking to blame the Jews for this stuff, and it has nothing to do with the Jews. It has to do with, uh, you know, dealing with totalitarian dictatorships overseas. You know, and you're directing your attention at at really 19th century bugaboos, 19th century, uh, you know, 1940s bugaboos that Hitler did. You know, the economy is it's a Jewish conspiracy because some of the people in the Federal Reserve or in the government are Jews. Well, the Rothschilds have come to mind, and I've done uh, history. I published a history of the Rothschilds come to mind. So the Rothschilds were rich, and the Rothschilds were Jews, and the Rothschilds helped other Jews. They didn't run a, an international conspiracy to control the world. We went through this last week. You know, uh, some of the things uh, since we were since we discussed on your show before. You know, some emails after the show. I presume in this way, have me back. You know, you made the comment that the Yiddish word for goyim meant cattle. And at the time, you know, I thought that's interesting. I'd never heard such a thing. And this was, uh, it's not true. Uh, goyim uh, is a reference to the nations of the world. It has nothing to do with cattle. That rumor was started by Ernst Zundel, who was a Holocaust denier. And uh, Holocaust denial and anti-Semitism, by the way, are a niche business and a very good business. And uh, it's a way for some individuals to get a niche market and to make money. And I'd hope it wouldn't be you uh, as one of them, Clay. I'm not making money out of anything here. Well, yeah. The only thing, the only thing is, when I go to the uh, FreeAmerican.com website, you know, I see requests for money and uh, you know ideas you want to sell things. To. So maybe um, you know, uh, if if the anti-Semitism which exists on the site or the references to things that are anti-Semitic particularly the protocol of Zion, which I want to get to in the show with you. Um, if they're if they're not up there to, to make a buck for you, and they're not making a buck for you, I think it's time to lose that stuff and uh, and get real, because, you know, the Jews don't sit together, like I said, in the synagogue or in little meeting halls and plot to take over the world. And it's an embarrassment for you and your organization to uh, be so simple to, to apply something like that. If Ernst Zundel can come, who was just the Holocaust, uh, I referred to it. it didn't kill six million Jews, it didn't kill any Jews at all. It's all make believe. All the reams and reams of photographs and documentation of Jews being murdered in death camps and all that stuff, which we know is true, didn't really happen. You know, and he has, uh, you know, and he sells books about it and stuff like that. So he comes out and he says, well, when, when the Yiddish say, go ahead and, and, and Gentile, uh, they're talking about cattle. And this is, uh, I sent you a link. I, I hope you read it. And it explained, uh, it explained how, uh, you know, this was something started on the Internet. That's the same thing with the Protocols of Zion. Um, you know, uh, yeah, the protocol, I, I've said it again. You know, I've read the Protocols, and it looks to me a plan for one world government. Now, now, whether whoever wrote it, uh, you know, it really doesn't matter uh, to me because they're dead. They've been dead for a long time. But what does matter is is something like this being used by somebody, one world government, and and you have to admit we there is one for one world. They write up public with Council on Foreign Relations, the the, uh, the uh, Rockefellers. You know, say that, uh, you know, yeah, if, if, if you think, uh, you know, uh, something, uh, well, you know, if, that, if, that's your, if that's your belief and you're really uh, shocked that, I, you know, I'm really curious as to what 
you go take uh, attack and the leftists who for opposing one world government or opposed to globalization blame it on international corporations I, I do, I do put the fight on international uh, Yeah, yeah, well, but you know, you, uh, I, I went through your website, I went through pretty, pretty thoroughly since the last that was on your show. And you you know, and you were talking about the anti-Shia League. And your website, um, your website contains a lot of anti-Semitic material and references to other anti-Semites like Allison Weir, who was really a not, as she runs if Americans knew. And you people to uh, her, her website. Uh, I, I, her I, I, I refer people to a film that, that somebody's put out. Now look, you know, this, this, this is the point. You know, I want to tell you, I've got you on my show right now because I want to, I want to know both sides of it. I think you're, uh, my well, that, 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 and that's, and that's why, I, and that's why I came on your show. And you know what I want to see as a result of being on your show the next. I want to see a, a, a change in your website where anti-Semitic crap, things that have no basis in fact, things that are attacks on Jews, which also embarrass you, because these are the same things that Hitler used. The Protocols of Zion were used by Hitler and Stop, and they're used in the Arab world today, by the way. The Arabs have their best-running uh, television series. There's a series called Horseman Without a Horse, which is the Protocols of Zion redone. And they dressed up, and they're supposed to be Jews, and they do scenes like where they take people, and they, you know, and they cut their ears, and make them drink more lead. They take, and they murder children, and drain their blood to milk, so they're their pastry. So, yeah, and this is what's going that part of the world. Now, here's Columbus here, who's a libertarian, wants to be a libertarian. And he's in New Mexico, in the United States, and he swore, and he swore uh, on the U.S. Constitution and embraced the lies and propaganda which are created by the most monocle, just anti-American history of the world, still being used by states that were formerly allies of those uh, institutions that are still overseas. You follow? So, you know, hopefully, you said, you know, I come on the show and you, you want to be friends and you want to talk about that stuff, great. At the end of if, in this show, three more times, by the end of those three times, I want to see this program off the website. And I want to see Allison Weir off the website. I want to look through there and see what else you can have attacking me. I want the anti to come out and say, you know something, Clay Douglas has turned over the leaf. And he's not putting you know, up. Wait a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Oh, wait, well, hold on just a minute here. Hold on just a minute. You know, I, before I ever started investigating any of this, before I uh, did anything, I came out because of what happened in Waco. And uh, what has what happened in Waco got to do with the shoes? I mean, real. What is what happened in Waco got nothing. to do with the shoes? Nothing. Nothing. Not nothing. The only thing that happened now was I met a Jewish man coming out of a radio station, and we started talking about it, and uh, he, uh, his comment, oh, they got what they deserve. I said, what did those 17 little children get? What did they do to deserve what they, and she, uh, that's the only connection with, uh, the, with Jews that, that that story had, and it didn't do with it. But, but, the ABL attacked me. They put me in a booklet called Armed and Dangerous because I helped start the militias around the country. Not against the Jews, not Jews at all, but against the, the kind of government uh, that that would go in an attack. A the, the, mili the militias. Okay, this is Wild Calling and Crazy Clay showing up for breakfast. Oh, we have to go. We're I'm trying to make a point. You know, that's that's a, that's another uh, that I don't particularly care for. But I'm trying to make a point. Uh, the militias, the militias I started start right here had nothing to do with the Turner Diaries, and I talked to the I talked to the Aryan Nation. I was invited to speak at one of their events. I think at one of your events. Speak there, but. You aren't going to like what I get to say. Because every time you refer to blacks as people, Jews as Christ, Chinese as... 
mistakes. You are shooting yourself in the foot, and you are giving your enemy the 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 ammunition they need to destroy. Well, that shouldn't make me look good, bad. I'm to be white too. You know, I happen to be a touch. I don't mean I hate anybody from from uh, uh, Oklahoma, unless they prefer to mail Ohio, Oklahoma, one, you know. And I don't care, uh, and uh, people, over and over, all night, I don't care whether you're, whether you're Muslim. Uh, the Constitution Clay, do, you, Clay, Clay, do you really believe that there are mud people? Do you really believe that there are human beings on this planet? beings on this planet that are not human like you, that have the same physicalities as you, no, that are I, the I, same I, makeup I, as you, I, that are mud people, why don't you listen to what I say, Lee? Why are you screaming? Why are you screaming? The only reason, wait a minute, when you scream at me, when you scream at me, listen you scream, at me, listen you scream me. at me because you don't have, that's I, I, why you scream. I can't, I can't get an answer. Where are you me all the damn time? I just asked you a question. Why don't you answer my question? Don't, when don't, I say mud people. people. What I just said to you. I, what I just said is when the Aryan nation says things like this and puts that kind of language out, I said they are shooting themselves in the foot. And I don't like it and I don't appreciate it. And I'm that. All right, so you, you're telling, all right, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, then. All right, maybe it's helping me in apology. So then what you're saying to me is you don't agree with the Aryans or aren't mud people. No, I don't agree with them. It is, uh, I think that it is, that is stupidity on their part. They've only got one piece of literature that I've ever seen that I agree with. And it was on a booklet, and it said, Be of your race. Okay, so if that's the case, if what you did, if that's the kick over here on the phone, which is interfering with somewhat with what we're doing. If that's the case, then uh, you have to explain to me why you insist on running a something like the Protocol Society, known forgery put together by the Tsar's secret police, and then you know by I'll answer that when I get right back. When I get back. understand that it's indeed times clear we're hearing about the energy and food crisis but we're fueling the effects of the bowl. Survivalfoodnow.com has been established by a group of concerned Americans who care about the future of our families. We at survivalfoodnow.com understand their necessity for our survival, water and food. We all have air. The majority has water, but only two tenths of one percent have a food supply. What are you going to do? There are only two choices for prepared or don't be prepared. Your family may very well depend on the choice you make. SurvivalFoodNow.com's mission is not to cause fear or panic. Our mission is simply to let our fellow countrymen know they only have two choices. SurvivalFoodNow knows being prepared can be a cost of the proposition. It is our goal to get historical food supplies to all our members. $50 that are shipped will keep you prepared. SurvivalFoodNow.com for over 15 years, the Free American has been providing all the news that the controlled media will find in the or the airway. This latest is nearly the next move by the banksters of the to destroy the Constitution of the American people and reduce us back to peace on the nation. These say men, the Israeli Mossad, have done everything possible to destroy the place justice and free America. Don't let them succeed. Subscribe to the Free American at freeamerican.com. Call 505-908-9498. Subscribe to the online edition and get $30 for limited issues or $50 for 12 issues. Five years ago, a man named Clayton Edison prayed for guidance and asked God what he could do. That night, Clayton was written in his wife on his bedroom wall. He woke his wife, but she saw nothing and told him to go. 
he made her get up and write the call. The next call, all of the formula written on his wall, and they found they had made the soap. The soap was perfect. No cartridge in the gym, no scum, and it cleaned so well, restaurants started using it to clean the grease of the oven. It was so gentle that it was used in their showers. The second product was the neutralizer, a clear alkaline energized water. It was the foundation for the soap, but when taken internally, it had so many health benefits that it could truly be called miraculous. Six products are now in the M2. Soap, soap with moisturizer, gel, moisturizer, and deodorant stone. The products sell for $16 each, plus $5 shipping. Or you can get all six for a 505-908-94. Go to freeamerican.com and order securely online. Are you suffering from shock for therapy? The surefire cure. We did see and restore your equilibrium by reading The Grim Shadow, a modern-day fable. A story packed with suspense, betrayal, terrorism, and a dubious political election. The Grim Shadow is at its core a parable of loyalty and love. Check out the reviews at thecoast.com. Little book, big story. The ultimate allegory. about the existence of the United States 
can't say it's all Hyman Solomon. Solomon hadn't to help George Washington when he did. Go look him up on the internet. We might still be British. The fact of the matter is, it's somebody who was Jewish, and it burns my butt. It really burns my butt when I look at this crap, like the Protocols of Zion, and you're also Americans new on your website, and I see this garbage attacking Jews who uphold the same Constitution you want to uphold, and you try to suggest that all that the Jews or that some Jews are involved in a world to make a one world government to take things. You know, I, I had somebody, I had a Jewish man come in my uh, store, and I had uh, some story regarding uh, regarding Jews magazine. And let me tell you why I've got this developers as I like, because I don't believe in censorship. Now, whether whether it's uh, whoa, 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 whoa. you're trying to censor me. Now wait a minute, just just a moment now. Go ahead, go ahead and say what you want. Go ahead and say what you. Want. I keep but, telling but, you. I keep telling 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 you. I keep so you might not have seen that. I said, we don't have to reinvent the wisdom about our family fathers gave us a constitution to provide us with the control on government, the Bill of Rights, our rights, and the freedom of speech, our church of religion. We don't care, Muslim, Christian, or pagan, as long as you don't steal, murder, or try to dominate. We don't care if you're black, white, brown, be proud of your race, God made us all. We think Americans and American shipwrecks, the Vietnamese, the Iraqis, the Palestinians are trying to protect their country and people. We damn right we're protectionist, constitutionalist, and free Americans. Let's say no, no to the New World Order, one world banking monopoly, the institution of the free Americans that are trying, willing to defend it. It stands between us and tyranny. Show the rest of the of the world and the hope of the world. Let us lead by example, not arms of oppression. That's okay. Uh, I wrote that. That came. That that came from her. Also, all right. So let's go to the first page of your website, and it says more on the plan American down. That's when I explain protocols in plain English, and when I click on it, what do I get? Well, let's see. It says here. Uh, it says here in just the first few paragraphs that the protocols are proof. This is a, and it can go on and on and on. In the beginning, talking about uh, uh, chapters of the protocol, being, being proof that the Jews have a conspiracy in the world. Okay, so you say something on the second page, which sounds pretty good, Clay. But if somebody may read this, they read this on your web. It says it's print. It doesn't say this may be a forgery put up to attack the Jews. And you, maybe you are saying, you are saying, oh, it's all the Saudis, oh, it's all the, oh, it's all the Palestinians, and I don't believe either. And I, but I, I bring you know my two sides. Well, I, I don't remember saying it's all, but, but I don't remember saying it's all Lebanese. Well, I don't know anybody. And I tell but, you. But I, but I, but I, but I want to see, but this, this would always come to thing with you. When I talk to you about protocols of Zion down, you'll say, why, I have nothing against Jews. Uh, you know, I'm just freedom of speech and yak, yak, yak. What this is right here, I'll say, the protocols of the learned elders in Zion, feared in any document ever, and a rich translation from the early 1900s. A forgery or a blueprint of the New World Order? Is it a Jewish ploy by someone else to blame the Jews? You judge. Okay, but then when you read the preface, it states that it's all true. And the fact is, documents, what you don't understand and what you don't appreciate, this document is used to murder not just six million, because this was used by Hitler, it's been used not just to murder six million in World War II. This was used millions of Jews prior to World War II, and it is used to murder Jews, and it's been used even by Stalin to murder Jews. You understand? 
Uh, let me ask you about the, the Soviet Union. Uh, I, it's been my information that now uh, the Planet Bureau in the uh, Soviet Union were Jews. Were Jewish. Is that? They had to. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We went through this. We went through this last week. And Stalin killed 50 million white Russians. They weren't all Jews. There were a lot of white Russians. There were a lot of Christian Russians. There were 50 million of them. People like I was a nigga put in the prison camp. The head of the white Russians was who? It was Kerensky, who was a Jew. Okay? So, again. You know, it was the same thing. By the Jews in the Soviet system were people maybe of Jewish ancestry who were figure about being Jewish anymore and were very happy to herd up into uh, concentration camps or to murder them, okay? Marx was of Jewish descent, but he was an anti-Semite. He hated so was, the Jewish so was Lenin. Lenin was Jewish too, wasn't he? Well, uh, he, I think he was half of half Jewish extraction, but the fact of the matter is he didn't even Jewish either. But again, see, you're coming back to this. You're saying, we were talking about Waco a minute ago. And she said, well, I ran into this. It doesn't matter that she ran into a weed with you about what happened at Waco. What does it matter that the guy was Jewish? I mean, the fact of the matter is the man had been a Christian. Would you be sitting there and saying there's a Christian conspiracy? I didn't say it was a the United States. You know, I didn't say it was a Christian. But, 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 but you, you know, what, what are you trying to twist up? You know, there are, there are. Uh, listen, I'm not, twist, I'm not twisting anything. I'm not twisting anything. I'm not twisting anything. Look at what's up, site. Look at what's on your website. You're the one who starts to start screaming at me over stuff that you have on your website. It's not stuff that I put on your website. I've got you it's stuff right. I've got you put on your website. You're damn right I do. I do. I do. You're damn right I do. And you know, I do not blame all of the Jews. I hate Jews. Although talking to people like her they make sure the real uh, puts a bad light on uh, most people. Now, I've got Aaron Russo. Who, who I've got I've got Aaron Russo's uh, films. I've got Aaron Russo. I've got his statements about the uh, Rockefellers. Uh, and I'm not. Uh, he's not pointing out that they, they they killed him too with cancer. Well, the Rockefellers the Rockefellers are not Jews in a way. I, I, I why were they listed? Why were the Rockefellers in uh, the uh, as uh, uh, they were listed as publication as being Jews? I, I don't know. The, 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 well, this is this, this is an illustration because you know um, Jews when you when you when you put this crap out, the Rockefellers are not Jew. They've never been Jewish. The Arab world, the totalitarian Arab world, which wants you to attack Israel, well, I've seen that side, um, tries. To you claim that a lot of people who are Jewish who aren't Jewish, and the, the Rockefellers aren't Jewish, but apparently you believe that, that they were. You know, one of the things that doesn't matter to me last week. It for me. Like what if, if somebody's ancestors were Jews? It doesn't matter to me whether your mother was Jewish. You know, I uh, blame all the Jews. Rocke the Rockefellers, Rockefellers have no. Ancestry that goes back to being Jew. Okay, the Rockefellers are not Jews. They don't go there in their uh, family tree to be Jews. That's fine. I'm not talking of Jews. Uh, I, I, just uh, using them as an example. We were just using them as an example. You know, I, 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 I've got this. Some of the things I do as an investigative journalist is I listen to artists. Okay. About you, because I still think there may be a chance that you're redeemable. I listen to artists who say things like, "Well, I don't have anything against Jews. I'm not even against the Jewish state. I'm not against Israel." To let uh, uh, seven million Arabs move inside Israel and live there with the Jews, and that sounds perfectly reasonable. Except what they want so many Arabs there that the, the Jews will be. Uh, Forced out of existence as a Jewish state, 
and then they can have another Palestinian or rather another Arab leadership in the region instead of a, a state that's a democracy in the states. Um, you know, do I want what, to be what, what, what are you are you uh, supporting the Jews or are you a Jew? Am I what? You an are you an Ashkenazi Jew or are you a supporter? I'm an Ashkenazi, and I'd love to your listeners here and probably explain to you too. What's the difference between an Ashkenazi Jew and a Mizrahi Jew? Okay? An Ashkenazi Jew is of European descent. An Ashkenazi Jew is a Jew uh, from the Middle East. Now, we Arabs, for example, who know Zion and their propaganda, by the way, the Americans knew this propaganda. Uh, when the Arabs tried to say, well, we're just people of the Middle East, African and Isaac Jews from Europe, there's no right to live here. I can go into a long explanation about the fact that why can't Jews buy a land and live someplace the same as anybody else in this country. But the fact of the matter is that half of the Jews in Israel are Rahi Jews. They're Jews who are from, are indigenous to the Middle East. They are racially the same as the Arabs. They practice religion, which is Judaism. Isn't that right? Tell me about Tell me about the Khazars. That's what it's Because Yeah, I can tell you about the Khazars. The Khazars are what's it came down in the Middle East. Today, Georgia, the Khazars are Arabs. 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 The who were carrying on their jihad to bring uh, them to the world back into Europe, and the Asians who were fighting the Muslims and also trying to spread Christianity. Now, what happened of Kizaria called the religious leader of countries because he was caught in the middle, and he said, what religion is the closest to yours? And I told him Judaism. He converted the entire kingdom of Kizaria Judaism, okay? And he, imp he imported uh, priests and rabbis from Jerusalem, by the way. Uh, hold, on a minute. hold on a minute. I don't want music to uh, come up anything you say. We'll be right back. We'll leave. Peace. 
are just about gone. Our only hope now is to rise up. You have so sure on. And that what's right for the others. Get the news and information you need. Time and effectively fight to the world order. This is a lie. It's a full fighter. Something you want to get off your chest? Or something wonderful you want to shout about to the world? Well, send us. I'm Rex Brocky, the host of Rants and Raves to the Rex on Revolution Broadcasting. Every day at Eastern, or every weekday at least, you can tune in the best and the worst in the news of these very interesting times we live in. Our Raves to the Rex on Revolution Broadcasting. Negroes 
if these are from Ethiopia, these are when and they were brought into Israel and they were Jews. I wrote an article about one named Shimon Adega, who was a Jew, who was killed by Hezbollah. And Jews are nice, okay? Judaism is an idea. There are Jews in Israel today of, multi, of multiple races. There are some Jews in Israel today, very few there, who are even Asian. Some Jewish communities went to uh, the Far East and settled there. Today, that's Jewish communities there. Okay, you know, you're saying, uh, I mean, I know there's going to be some of the, the European Jews aren't real Jews, they're, they're descendants of ours. Well, maybe some, but the fact that uh, the descendants of the slaves that were brought out of uh, uh, Judea and Israel by the Romans, uh, see, now here's some information for you. It was the Romans. It was, it was the Romans who renamed Israel Palestine. They called it Philistia. And the reason why they renamed was they were uh, fed up with the revolts by the Jews that they asked, uh, uh, since I who were the greatest mortal enemies of the Jews throughout history? And they said the Philistines, which by then were long gone. So they renamed Israel Philistia, which became bastardized in English in time. So, you know, that's the origin of the word Palestine. And there was always a Jewish man there for 5,000 years in Jerusalem. In fact, the majority of the pop group in Jerusalem was around here. All right. Enough of that. That was Lee Kaplan from, uh, well, about a year ago or so, I guess. Defending the Jews, trying to get me to take the protocols of the elders of Zion off my site. Ain't going to happen. <clears throat> Again, everybody from Henry Ford to uh, Eustace Mullins have told you that this is a blueprint for world domination under Satan. It's Satanism. Probably tomorrow I'll give you more on the nature of Zionism from uh, James Perloff's book. And he talks about the six-pointed star, though called the Star of David, it has no biblical basis. If desired, Israel could have used a more familiar Jewish image, such as the menorah, the seven-branched candelabrum described in the book of Exodus. Wikipedia said the Star of David in 2008, its usage began in the Middle Ages, exact origins of the symbol uh, Symbols in relation to Jewish identity are unknown. Several theories were put forward. Satan tries to counterfeit the things of God. The Bible says the Antichrist will do signs and wonders and amaze the world because he was wounded and yet lived. Sound like Christ. It also says he will rule for three and one half years, the same amount of time theologians ascribe to Christ's earthly ministry. Christianity teaches the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the relationship of Satan to the Antichrist and false prophet, described in the book of Revelation, has been called an unholy trinity, with Satan counterfeiting God the Father, Antichrist, a counterfeit Christ, and a false prophet counterfeiting the Holy Spirit. Contrary to the widely held Christian view, so says James Perloff, I suggest that the modern state of Israel is not the rebirth of a biblical Israel, but a satanic counterfeit. I stress that I say this in a political context. I do not for a moment deny the sincere faith of the many professing followers of Judaism now living in Israel. And that will do for an answer to uh, this Israel supporter that you just listened to. I am Clay Douglas. Go to freeamerican.com, make a donation. I certainly appreciate it. I appreciate uh, your support. God bless you all. Goodbye. Yeah. 
see ya.